What's up everyone, it's Ben here and today I'm gonna talk about what for me was the most challenging and kind of scariest part of the whole MBA application process, the GMAT. Now, when I was preparing for the GMAT, I didn't really have someone telling me exactly what kind of resources I should use or how to exactly to prepare, but that's what I wanna do for all of you. And I was eventually able to get a 750 on the GMAT and it took me a lot of practice, hard work and research. And I wanna share with you all of the best tips that I was able to kind of compile in order for you to help get whatever score that you're reaching for. And so jumping into today's agenda, I'll first be sharing my personal GMAT score history. I'll then go over the three resources I recommend using. And lastly, I'll recommend an ideal study schedule. Two really quick things before I get started though. First, I'm actually creating a how to get into MBA course and I'm offering a huge discount for people who sign up early. Feel free to sign up using my link down in the description below. And second, shout out to our sponsor for today's video, Target Test Prep. They're a great resource for the GMAT and I'll go into them a little bit later in this video. All right, now first up, let me share with you my personal GMAT score history. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this section is show you guys my score history and provide some commentary as to what happened, and then also provide some tips as to how you can improve your process while you're studying. Okay, so here is my score history. And as you can see, it took me about three months to study for the GMAT, starting from early August to early November. One thing you'll notice is that I didn't take a practice test until I had studied for a few weeks. And I would recommend this, especially if you're thinking of using one of the official guide practice exams, because there are only six that you can actually take before they start reusing questions. And you can take another kind of like Princeton review or Manhattan prep kind of practice guide at the beginning in order to, or practice test. I mean, in order for you to kind of see what the test is like, I think that's totally fine. But I would really use the official guide kind of practice exams very sparingly because as I said, there's only six that you can really take. You can also see that my scores fluctuated a lot while I was studying. And if this is happening to you and you've like been studying a lot and your score is going down, don't panic because I'm pretty sure this happens to everyone. The last thing kind of worth mentioning here is that you can see that my official exam score went from 700 to 750 in a matter of few weeks. And to kind of explain what happened here, when I first took my real exam and got the 700, I had just flown from Korea to LA and I had been meeting a bunch of friends the week before my exam, honestly, honestly like going to bars and just having way too much fun. And in retrospect, it was kind of like a bad idea. And then I flew back to Korea where I honestly don't have as many friends. I was living with my parents, uh, kind of working on a separate business and also studying for the GMAT. And that's when I, I, that's when I really, really like focused was doing anywhere from like 40 to 60 practice questions a day. And all I did was study for two weeks up to my exam and I was able to get a 750. And so kind of moral of the story there is not to drink honestly before the exam and also to just kind of uh, really focus your one to two weeks before the exam and um, try to resist intense like socialization if you can, uh, because it'll be worth it for you to kind of sacrifice one to two weeks in order for you to really get that good score. One more thing I wanna add actually is that for the last exam that I did take, I actually thought it was going super poorly because for the last part of the verbal section, I kind of ran out of time and I had to guess on the last two questions. And so I thought, you know, two questions may not sound like a lot, but it's kind of a, it can really impact your score for the GMAT. And so I kind of thought that I was gonna have to retake the exam. Verbal was the first thing that I took uh, and I took quant after. So I had kind of like the half the exam left. I just decided to take it anyway. And I was super surprised by the score that I got at the end. And so kind of, I guess, even if the exam is not going super well, as you probably know, if you're studying for the GMAT, it is an adaptive test, which means that it gets harder and harder the better you do. And so even if it feels like it's not going well, I do recommend that you just keep pushing through and finish the exam. And so to summarize, I would say there are three key takeaways from my GMAT studying history. The first is to be prepared for a very up and down experience with practice exam scores that's totally normal. The second is to really hunker down and focus for the two weeks before your exam and kind of resist socializing too much. And third, don't give up on the actual exam itself if you think it's going poorly because the test is adaptive and it's meant to feel like that. All right, now next up, let me go over the top three resources I used and recommend for the GMAT. The first is Target Test Prep, also known as TTP, which is the resource I use to study for quant. And I really can't say enough good things about this resource. 
What TTP does is break down the entire GMAT into a list of individual topics for quant and verbal, and each topic comes with lessons and practice sets that range from easy to medium to hard so that you can build your confidence and master each topic. So personally, I only used TTP for quant because at the time, their verbal course was in beta mode, and so I wasn't sure if I wanted to kind of dedicate my time using it, but now it's been a few years and TTP has really flushed out its verbal course as well. And so I think TTP is really the one of the best fundamental kind of courses you can take in order to really prepare for the GMAT. You also don't need to just take my word for it because gmatclub.com is one of the best sites for GMAT prep. And as you can see here, TTP is the only resource with a five out of five star rating. And these are all from verified users. If you use my link down in the description below, you can check out TTP for five days for just $1 and no strings attached. If the resource is not for you after you check it out, then all you lose is just $1. But I would kind of guess that if you're really just starting to study for the GMAT in particular, this is a great resource and I really credit Target Test Prep a lot for helping me get a 750 on my exam. The second resource I have for you, I think flies a bit under the radar and it's YouTube. More specifically for Quant, I highly, highly recommend watching all videos from Aditya Kumar and for Verbal, all videos from GMAT Ninja and I'll leave links to both of these in my description below. I watched a ton of YouTube videos while studying for the GMAT and these two guys are really the best for each of the sections of the GMAT and they don't cover the entire exam, but for all the topics that they do cover, they're just so good at teaching in this kind of intuitive way. And I don't have any idea who these guys are. I don't have any kind of contact with them. I just think for you, I, sh I, I really just guarantee if you watch one of their videos, you're gonna be like, oh, I get it. These guys are so good at teaching really complex problems and teaching you how to think about GMAT questions more intuitively. The third must use resource is the official guide or OG GMAT materials. And these provide previous practice exams and these come straight from the kinds of questions you'll see on the actual GMAT. And so this is like a must use resource that you should use for your studying. Personally, I did all the questions in the official guide, which is a big book with both verbal and quant. I then did the latter half of the questions in the OG verbal and quant guides because those are the harder ones. And after using TTP, I do recommend doing OG questions because the questions do vary slightly. I then did all of the medium and hard questions on the GMAT official practice questions, and then all the verbal and half of the quant for GMAT advanced questions. Now, of course, you don't need to do exactly what I did. And the number of questions you actually do with the OG materials will totally depend on how studying is going for you and if you need certain help with a certain section. Um, and so I'll leave links to all of the materials I used down in the description. You can kind of pick or choose what's kind of uh, most helpful for you. I just wanted to show you guys what it took for me to get the score that I wanted on the GMAT. All right, now last up, let me recommend for you an ideal study schedule. So this schedule is gonna be a bit more of a rough outline of if I had no idea what the GMAT was and I was just getting started with my studies, you know, what would I want to do ideally or what should I do? Uh, for you, it's gonna to totally depend on your situation, how far you are with your studies. And I actually do also recommend researching other resources, asking other people how they studied because, you know, I'm just one person and I think I know that this schedule would work best for me. Hopefully it's helpful for you to kind of piece together your own puzzle of how you're gonna be studying for your GMAT exam. Step number one is to familiarize yourself with the GMAT by taking a practice test from a non-official source like Manhattan Prep or Princeton Review. And the reason I think that it's a good idea to do this, even though it might, some people might say you want to kind of study for the GMAT before taking your first practice, but I think it's good to just kind of understand how the test works and, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself of scoring super well because you're just trying to understand what kind of questions pop up so that when you actually start your studies, you can know like, oh, okay, this is kind of how I need to study because these are the kind of questions that are on the exam, right? And also kind of like a psychological thing, I think if you're like first initial score, is not super great. After you do some studying, your score will jump, right? So you can actually feel like you're making some progress. So that could be like a nice little psychological boost. I would then really start focus on mastering the material in both verbal and quant, which are the two important sections of the GMAT. And I would use TTP and study for two to three months with it, but you can use your other, ma other materials, uh, whatever really works for you. And I think it does take two-ish months minimum to really give yourself enough time, especially if you're working. Simultaneously with number two, I would also watch all the YouTube videos that I recommended earlier with Aditya Kumar and GMAT Ninja. And um, you can kind of figure out when to kind of watch these, but I think, you know, when you're kind of too tired of studying just 
off of a book or mm -hmm. like a course and you want to take, you know, you want a bit of change of scenery, then I would watch one of their videos. When you're about one month into studying, that's when I would take the first official OG exam. And then afterwards, every one to two weeks, take another practice exam. And I would save that last sixth one uh, for about a one to two weeks before your actual exam, just because that you want to save your official one before uh, you take your real one, just to kind of give you like a benchmark to understand where you are, right? And in between all of that, if you want to take additional um, non-official practice exams, you know, definitely go for it. I personally only took the six official ones. Um, that's kind of just what I did for, I don't exactly know why, but if you have access to those other non-official practice exams, there's no harm in practicing more. In the last two to three weeks before your exam, once you've kind of covered all the material and have the fundamentals down and really need to just get some practice, that's where I would do 10 to 30 questions each day for each section. So that means 20 to 60 questions a day, maybe 20 on the weekdays if you have work and then 60 on the weekends for each day on the weekend. And when you have about one week left before exam, what I would really recommend is doing only advanced questions. And this is really going to make your brain hurt, but I think it really just helps build a lot of stamina because you're going to be used to seeing a lot of the harder questions, right? And the GMAT, as you may know, if you've already started studying, starts with the easier questions and goes towards the harder ones. And so if you're really used to the harder ones, then you know, you'll just be able to cruise through the easier ones and then the harder ones won't feel as difficult in a sense, or maybe you'll have more time because you're able to get through the easy ones quicker. Um, so that's what I would recommend. In addition, a week to a few days before your exam, what I would do is take your last official OG practice exam. And that's just to help you benchmark to see where you're at. Don't get too disheartened if you don't get really the score that you want. Um, because if you saw my score history, I was always kind of aiming for a 750, but for my final practice exam, I got a 720, but I was able to get you know a 750 on my real exam. So sometimes um, if you're like really good on game day, then maybe that'll help you. Or um, other times the actual GMAT exam can be a little bit easier than the practice ones. Um, although they are pretty comparative. So have faith in the work that you've done and, you know, just basically, uh, hopefully you crush that practice exam, but I'm just kind of trying to tell you that it's not the end of the world if it's not the score that you want. On the day before your exam, what I would do is about five to 10 questions for each section, just to make sure you're keeping yourself fresh with the material. Some people say not to study at all and just rest. And if that's what you want to do, of course, that's totally fine. I understand that as well. But for me, I thought of it as like an athlete who's training for or getting prepared for a big game. You know, you do some stretches, get some um, addition, like light exercise in. And uh, that's what I personally felt like worked well for me. Finally, all that's left for you to do is to take the GMAT and crush the exam. And one last kind of tip I do have for you is as you're doing your practice exams, try to do them around the similar time frame as when your actual exam is going to be. Um, normally, you're able to schedule your, the GMAT at, at whatever kind of time is most comfortable for you, right? And so if you're kind of more of a morning, morning person and that's when you have the most energy, then I would take all practice exams during the morning and then take the final exam in the morning as well. If you're super, super smart or really just a great test taker, then maybe you don't need to study as much as I did. I just wanted to share with all of you what it took for me to get a 750 on the GMAT and hopefully these tips were helpful. It took a lot of effort, only a few tiers, um, but I will say that all the effort and practice will really be worth it if you do get the exam score that you want. And so, yeah, it's a ton of work, but I do think it's worth it. I forgot to mention earlier on in the video, in case you're new to the channel, that I'm currently attending Wharton for my MBA. And if you actually want to sign up for my future how to get into MBA course, feel free to sign up using my link in the description. I'm giving huge discounts for people who sign up early. And lastly, wanted to give another reminder, if you're interested in studying for the GMAT, check out Target Test Prep. Um, you can try them out for just a $1. Uh, you'll have five, five days to check out the entire course. Feel free to check them out using my link in the description as well. With that said, thank you all so much for watching. Hope to catch you in the next video. Thanks so much and peace out.